Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem valid Sudoku and I'm going to be recording this on the 4th of July so hopefully there aren't too many firework noises in the background. So we are given a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku board and all we want to do is determine if the board in its current state is valid or not. And they tell us only the filled in cells need to be validated according to the three rules of Sudoku. So basically, each row must only contain digits between 1 through 9 without repetition. The same is true for every single column in this board. It can only contain digits 1 through 9 without repetition. That means we can't have duplicates in any particular row or any particular column. And the third part, which is going to be the most tricky, is each 3x3 three three sub box. Basically, you know, you can kind of see it in the drawing, right? Three by th This entire 9x9 nine nine grid is made up of 9 3x3 three three grids, right? There's one here, one here, one here and you know basically nine of them as you can see so basically for each of these three by three subgrids we also want to check that it only contains digits one through nine without repetition basically without repetition that means it has to contain every single digit from one through nine now of course the sudoku board doesn't necessarily have to be filled in you can see this three by three is not filled in but in this case we are going to say okay this this one is valid because it you know it only has a six and it doesn't have any duplicates right but we do, we don't only have to check each three by three grid we also have to check every single column and every single row now before i get into the solution let me just very quickly clarify what this problem wants from us you might overcomplicate it and think something like this. What if we had a row such as this one? It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That must mean, even though this spot is empty, that must mean a nine has to go here, right? That's pretty obvious. But take a look at this column. It has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That must mean that the value that goes here has to be a one. So we have a contradiction. We have to either put a one or a nine, but we know that both need to be in this position. So in this case, this is not a valid Sudoku board, right? Well, that's technically true, but for this problem, we are gonna consider this board, yes, it's valid, because as of right now, based on what the cells are filled in, like what cells are filled in, there aren't any contradictions. We're not gonna assume anything for any of these empty positions, even though we know for sure, yes, a nine would have to go here based on this row, we're not gonna assume that. So it's actually a little bit easier than you might think. So the algorithm is gonna be pretty standard, right? We're gonna go through every single row and make sure every particular row does not have any duplicates how could we do that we could do it a bunch of different ways but i'm going to do a hash set right so a hash set will be easy for us to detect if there are any duplicates so we're going to have a unique hash set for every single row in the entire grid right so then we can easily determine if any particular row has any filled in duplicates right this row obviously doesn't a five a three and a seven no duplicates right so that portion is pretty easy, right? Number one is pretty easy to check. What about number two, checking each column? We can do the exact same thing. Just have a hash set for every single column, right? Every single column has a hash set, and then we can determine if there are any duplicates or not, right? And for you know, adding an element to the hash set, is O of one, checking duplicates is also O of one. So, so far we have a time complexity. If we're just checking the columns and the rows, we have a time complexity, which is basically the size of the entire grid, which is nine squared pretty much. Now the last part in theory should also be pretty easy, but coding it up is a little bit more tricky. There are many ways to do it. I'm gonna show you the easiest way. We want to be able to tell, okay, for every three by three grid, which there are nine of, does any of them have any duplicates? So again, we can use a hash set to represent each of these three by three grids. But the question is, how are we gonna do it? How can it be easy to code something like that? And that's what I'm gonna quickly explain to you right now. And after I do, we can jump into the code. The overall solution is yes, though, going to be O of N nine squared. We're pretty much just gonna have to iterate th over the entire grid and nothing else. But we are gonna have extra space, also O of nine squared, because we're gonna have three hash sets, which are gonna be this exact size. So roughly this is the memory complexity as well. 
So we want to represent each of these three by three grids with a hash set. But how do we know if we're at any particular value, right? Like I have labeled the indices, right? This is gonna represent what row, this is gonna represent which column. How do we know if we're if any particular value such as one one happens to be in this three by three grid, whereas a different cell such as four four happens to be in this uh, three by three grid? How can we differentiate them? Notice how each of these three by three uh, sub squares happens to be three by three, right? So one way is to basically make it so that we can have an index, right? So maybe zero represents this row of, of the three different squares, right? And a one represents this row of three squares and a two represents a row of this, right? And similarly for the columns, right? A zero over here represents this column, a one over here represents this column and a two over here represents this column. Then if we had two indices, right? If we can somehow take four, four and convert it to one, one, then we know it goes inside this subsquare, right? So basically we have nine different subsquares. We're gonna have indices to represent them, right? A one, one means that this is the subsquare that we're talking about, right? This one. And the way the math is gonna work out is since each of these is three by three, we can just take the actual index such as four, let's say we were given four, four, right? This is the square we're talking about. We can take four, which is the row, divide it by three, integer division, right? We're talking about integer division. Four divided by three is gonna give us a one. Similarly, we, we do the same thing with the column, right? Four divided by three is gonna give us a one, right? So if we take the actual coordinates, four, four, divide the coordinates, integer division by three, then we get the index for the row column. It basically identifies which square this is a part of. Now let's just check that the edge cases work out. Let's try eight, eight, right? This is the boundary. What happens if we take eight divided by three and eight divided by three, right? Well, then we get two, two, right? Integer division, we always round down two, two. That works out for us, right? Let's do a different edge case. Maybe we try this this square, right, on the boundary. Does this, does this identify zero, zero? Because that's what it should. Well, let's take the positions, the indices, two, two, divide them by three, two divided by three, two divided by three. We round these down, so we get zero, zero. That does uniquely identify or it, you know, correctly identifies that it belongs to this three by three grid. So that's kind of how we're gonna identify when we go through every position, every cell in the entire Sudoku board, which of the three, th which of the three by three uh, grids is it a part of? And then we can, t and then we can add them to that, right? So we're gonna have a hash set where the key of the hash set is gonna be a pair of values, the row column, not the actual row column, right? But the, you know, when we convert it to the row column, basically row divided by three and column divided by three. That's what the key of the hash map is gonna be. And the value is similarly going to be a hash set where we can tell, do we have any duplicates in this three by three grid or not, right? Same for every single three by three grid. We're just checking, does it have any duplicates? If not, then we can continue. If it does have a duplicate, that means our Sudoku board is not valid. And then we would have to return false. But if it is valid, we're just gonna continue. So we're basically gonna go over the entire grid, right? Every single uh, position in the entire grid. If we find any duplicates, we return false. If we don't, at the end, we can return true. So now we have enough information to actually write out the code. So let's do that. Okay, so now we can write the code. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna be detecting duplicates with a hash set but you could do it with arrays if you wanted to as well because we know the dimensions of this Sudoku board, it's nine by nine, but I'm gonna be using a, a hash set or dictionary just because it's easier. So in this case, I'm actually using a hash map where the uh, key is just going is gonna be the column number and the value is gonna be another set. Basically the set is gonna represent all particular values in this column and we're gonna do the same thing for rows. This is only so we can detect duplicates. So let's create another uh, hash map uh, with rows and another hash map with the squares. And remember the key for the squares is going to be a pair of values, basically the row divided by three and the column divided by three. So now we just want to iterate over the entire grid 
and we know it, the dimensions are nine by nine. So I'm just gonna hard code that in to these loops. And so we know that a position in the Sudoku board actually could be empty and they tell us that an empty position is represented by a dot. So the first thing we're gonna check is if this is an empty space, then we can just skip it, right? Then we're just gonna continue to the next iteration of the loop. The next thing we wanna check is have we found a duplicate? Because if we have, then we return false immediately. So we wanna know does this, this uh, value, if it's not empty, it has it already been detected. So if the board is in rows at this current row, what does this mean? We're saying, okay, the current row that we're in Basically, this is our hash map, right? Rows is our hash map. The key we're putting in is the current row that we're in. So that's so this basically represents a hash set, as you can see up above, a set, a hash set of all values that occur in this particular row number. So if so so basically, if this uh, this current number that we're at is already inside the current row, meaning we've already seen this value before in the current row that we're in, that means it's a duplicate, right? In which case we can return false, but that's not it. Basically, the exact same thing is gonna be true if this uh, value has already occurred in the same column before. So we're gonna change this to columns at the current column that we're at. So if this value has already occurred in the current column that we're, in, that we're in, that means we've detected another duplicate, in which case we can return false. And last but not least, we have to check if this value has already occurred in the current square that we're in before. So how do we get the current square that we're in uh, right now? Well, we, we know the key for that is gonna be a pair of values, basically, as I wrote above, row divided by three and column divided by three. So that tells us the current square that we're in, and this will return a set, as you can see up above, of all the values that we have seen in the current square before. And if this value that we're at right now is a duplicate, that means it's already gonna be in this, this hash set, in which case we can also return false. So this is basically our way of validating that this current Sudoku board is valid. If we have any duplicates, that means it's not valid, we return false. If it is valid, we continue, and we basically update all three of our hash maps up above. So columns of the current column, we're gonna add to it the current character that we just saw, and we're gonna do the same thing with the current row that we're in. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with the current square that we're in. Of course, this has a pair of values as the key. So this makes sure that our hash sets are updated and we'll make sure to detect any duplicates when we get to the next iteration of the loops. So in this way, we're iterating over the entire board. And if we never detect any duplicates, then we can outside of the loop just return true. That means the current Sudoku board with the current values populated in it is valid. As you can see, the solution runs and is pretty efficient. So I hope this was helpful. This is one of the easier ways, the more neat ways of writing this code. Of course, there are some more complex ways as well, but I think this is fairly readable. And the main, you know, the trick that we use is just this whole row divided by three, column divided by three, which just makes the code a lot easier in my opinion. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.